A very good evening to one and all. Yesterday for class 10th we have learned about the structure of chromosome. Today for class 10th we will be learning about the structure of DNA. That is the final topic of the cell. Especially the cell cycle and cell division. What we are going through these days. Now <clears throat> when we are talking about DNA. What is DNA? DNA is just deoxyribonucleic acid. Just the full form justify its statement? No. The full form will never justify the statement of the DNA. It is because the DNA is the genetic material. The DNA consists of genes. When this DNA is transferred from the body of our grandparents to our parents and from parents to us and from ourselves to our children, that time the DNA carries information. And these informations carried by DNA shows that the we are the heirs or we are the children of our parents because we are sharing a lot of attitudes, behavior, just like our parents and our forefathers. That is the main definition of DNA. That is how we can justify that, yes, DNA is existing over here. Now, when uh, the scientist James Watson and Francis Crick when uh, they went for the experiment to study the structure of DNA, they with lot of difficulty, these both, they both person, these both person with lot of difficulty, uh, they have found that DNA is helical in structure. Helical in structure means they are having curve in the structure. The basic structure of the DNA, when we are seeing in our textbook, the two serpentine, two snakes kind of structure crossing each other. Two snakes kind of structure is crossing each other. That is the main structure of the DNA. But when we are unwinding the DNA, let us take a cell is there. From the cell, what we need to do is, we need to extract the nucleus. From the nucleus, what we do, what we need, what we need to do is, we will extract the chromosome. When we will disintegrate the chromosome or when we will break the chromosome, we can find the genetic material that is the DNA present in it. Now, when we are studying the DNA, that okay, we understood that inside the chromosome DNA is there. What we have learned earlier, the DNA along with the core of histone protein forms the nucleosome. Nucleosome compressed and compiled and condensed to form chromatin fiber. Chromatin fiber condensed or compiled to form the chromosomes. Now, when we are unwinding the chromosome, what we did find? We find the DNA is present. Now, what is the DNA composed of? DNA is composed of nucleotide. Now, on being studying in a depth, we found that nucleotide is also having nitrogenous base, pentose sugar, as well as the phosphate group. Three groups are there. Nitrogenous base, the pentose sugar and the phosphate group. Can you imagine a simple structure? Not even a, a very big structure. Very, 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 very minute structure. That minute structure is having the nucleotide and that nucleotide itself is made up of nitrogenous base, phosphate and pentose sugar. Now, when we see what is the composition of this nitrogenous base? We found the nitrogenous base is composed of ATGC that is adenine, A for adenine, T for thymine, G for guanine and C for cytosyl. That is the main structure. Apart from the presence of pentose sugar and the phosphate group, the nitrogenous base is playing the major role. Because if the nitrogenous base is not there, the snake kind of structure of the DNA, two snakes crossing each other, is not possible. Now, when we are seeing the DNA properly, when we are seeing the DNA properly, we can find this nitrogenous bases are just making the rungs of the ladder. Let's say two kinds of snakes just crossed each other and they are having the rungs. Rungs means what? The step of the ladder. The step of the ladder is made by this nitrogenous base only. Means imagine if there is no nitrogenous base and only pentose sugar and phosphate, DNA structure is not at all possible. Not at all possible. So the presence of nitrogenous base is the urgent requirement for the sustaining of the structure of the DNA. Now, when we are seeing the structure of the DNA with adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine, these are the nitrogenous bases present. Now, these nitrogenous bases, for else, for example, we are seeing the two strands of DNA. Each DNA is having two strands. Strands means those serpents crossing each other, the snakes crossing each other, one kind of and then the other kind of two strands are there. So, since there are two strands, two strands of DNA are present, 
means each DNA is having two strand. Let's say one strand is having the A, then in the same position the another strand will having T because they are complementary to each other. A is complementary to T, G is complementary to C. Now let's say here A, then in the next strand in the same position it will be T. Then G, then in the next strand same position it will be C. Then again C, there will be G. Then again T, then there will be A. It, it could be anything. Either in this side ATGC or in this side TACG or maybe this side TACG or this side ATGC means they this uh, four nitrogenous bases are complementary to each other means wherever there will be a there will be t wherever there will be g there will be c wherever there will be t there will be a wherever there will be c there will be g but how they sustain with each other how they make the complementary with each other they can make the complementary with each other by the help of the hydrogen bond a with t is linked with double hydrogen bond g with c is linked with triple hydrogen bond which makes the bonding of the nitrogen bases so strong that the structure of the dna sustains now, two strands are there in each DNA. These two strands are complementary to each other. Why? Because the nitrogenous bases are complementary. If A, then this side T. If G, then this side C. If T, then this side A. Then C, then this side G. So, but we need to understand here two things, two concepts. When A makes bond with T, it is just the double bond. When G makes bond with C, it is the triple bond. When C makes bond with G, triple bond. When T makes bond with A, that is the double bond. So, A double bond T and G triple bond C, which makes the nitrogenous basis bonding so strong that DNA sustain with its structure. Now, if the DNA is sustained with its structure, then how is it possible to break DNA? Of course it is. The DNA is breaking when there will be an cell division. When the cell division persists, that time the DNA breaks. How? Let's say we are in the cell division stage. That time one enzyme is there that is known as DNA helicase. That helicase enzyme is, will break the curve of the DNA. We know each DNA is having two strands. Two strands are complementary to each other because their nitrogenous bases are complementary. Let's say the DNA helicase is applied on the strands of DNA. Means in on one single DNA, the DNA helicase is applied. So how many strands in the DNA? There are two strands in a DNA. In a single DNA, two strand. So the moment the DNA helicase enzyme will be acting upon the DNA containing two strand means in a single DNA, both the strand will break. Both the strand will break. Now the DNA is no more having double strand. Now there is two single strand. But DNA is having a nature. It is auto-replicating. It is auto-replicating. Now this both strand will replicate one of its kind automatically. It is auto-replicating. DNA is a, having a character that it is auto-replicating means one strand. Let's say if one if our DNA is broken into two parts by the help of the DNA helicase enzyme. Now two strands are separated, which were, which was one cross which was once cross linked with each other. Now these two strands are separated. So since these two strands are separated, now what will happen? DNA is having the nature of auto replicating. This single strand will generate another complementary strand. And this single strand will also generate another complementary strand. So both the single strand. Now let's say the structure of the DNA is quite like this. It is crisscrossed. DNA helicase came, unwinds, two different, two separate strands created. Now what happens? They are auto-replicating. They are self-replicating. So what will happen here? This strand will create another complementary strand. This strand will also create another complementary strand. And now one DNA became two. So 2 will become 4, 4 will become 8 like that. So Watson and Crick when they solved the structure of DNA, they also gave the theory that DNA may be an auto-replicating structure. And this, since this invention was a great boost up in the field of biology and the medical science, so they were also honored with the Nobel Prize in the year 1962. In 1953, they have said about the structure of DNA and in the year 1962 they were honored with that Nobel Prize. I hope this video is clear. Please go through the video and match it with your text and please do understand it properly. Thank you.